I am Dr. Lynette Bradley Baker, Senior Vice President of Public Affairs and Engagement at the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy. I am also the 2021 to 2022 Chair of the ASAE, Healthcare Community Advisory Committee, or the HCAC. We thank Visit Flanders, the ASAE Foundation, and our ASAE Foundation donors for their support of this session. I am very pleased to be here today with Brett from Springbrook to start having the very important conversation regarding associations and their potential role in population health as it relates to their staff and members. Population health, as we saw from the short video, focuses on how groups and organizations work together to improve health outcomes for a community that they serve. Some population health areas of consideration that have become more of a focus with COVID-19 include, number one, our work, the fact that our staff and our members are working longer hours, which may include working from home that brings a whole host of other issues that we're gonna talk through. It is likely that where and how we work will be very different after the pandemic than it was prior to the onset of the pandemic. Number two, our stress. Stress, as we know, is an, is an emotional and physical reaction to change. Stress can be positive and give us energy, or it can be unhealthy and cause health problems. Stress for short periods of time may not affect us, but over a long period of time, of time can cause or make some illnesses work, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and heart disease. And a constant and or increased level of stress pertaining to work and the external circumstances that we are all going through, such as the COVID-19 pandemic and social injustice issues, it's definitely a part of our lives at this point. Number three, our health. This includes all facets of health, including emotional, mental, and physical health concerns and consequences. And fourth, and last but not least, our well being and resilience. Well being is defined not merely by the absence of disease or illness, but it is a complex combination of a person's physical, mental, emotional, and social health factors. If we even want to pull it out a little bit more, it also includes our intellectual, environmental, vocational, financial, and spiritual health. Resilience is a more abstract concept that is gaining a lot of areas of, of focus during this time of COVID-19. And that describes a person's ability to overcome or adapt to perceived or real adverse or challenging circumstances. So all of these areas, our work, our stress, our health, and our well-being and resilience will continue to be focus areas for all of us as individuals and as members of the association management profession. Some of our health-oriented associations have incorporated topics pertaining to population health, such as health equity, health care quality, and social determinants of health into the strategic plans. However, population health areas such as well-being and resilience can be, can be a consideration as an area of focus for any association strategic plan, operational plan, or could even be a determining factor when examining potential partnerships. Some of our associations are at the beginning stages of exploring strategies and tactics to assist their staff and members in the area of well-being and resilience. And all of these areas will move, but all of these efforts, excuse me, will move us toward a more healthy workplace, which includes preventative health and well, well-being management. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Brett, who will introduce himself and his work and will speak to us more about health and well-being at a strategic level, as well as talk through give us some pointers, some information on what associations can do to promote healthy behaviors for our staff and our members. Brett? Yeah, thank you very much, Lynette. Uh, wonderful introduction, very clear. Um, and it's an honor for me to be here uh, this evening and um, introduce to you a little bit on, on what our passion is about. Um, my name is Esbrecht Beuschaert. I'm uh, 39 years old and I'm uh, the founder and managing partner of uh, Springbok Health Coaching at Work. Um, I've studied uh, sports physical education at the, the university in Leuven. I graduated in uh, 2004 
so that's a long while already. And since then, I, I, I worked for 10 years in business development. So when I started Springbok in 2014, I was all by myself focusing on uh, sports and nutrition uh, towards uh, employees within organization. And now we are, uh, let's say, seven, almost eight years uh, further in pro my professional career as an entrepreneur. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very passionate about uh, implementing uh, health and well-being strategies within organization. And so, uh, as I told already, um, we have been doing that since uh, seven years. So we have already more than 150 business cases where we are really focusing on on changing the health behavior of uh, employees within within organizations. So that's that's really our target to make people more aware of uh, the important importance of health and well-being. So as you already mentioned, Lynette, it's it's more than only the physical part of the story. It's physical, mental, social, emotional, and even on a spiritual uh, level that we are working. So uh, last year we had the COVID. So it was really, really, uh, really, uh, um, how do you say that, challenging times. Um, so we really had to reinvent our uh, business model because it was really physical oriented on the, on the working spaces. Um, so we changed it. So we did a lot of, of it uh, online. Um, but it gave me a lot of time as well. Um, and during that time, I took the time to, to write a book. So I, I wrote my own book. Uh, I have written my own book, Wealthy Workplaces. That's like a blend of well-being management, uh, health management, and as well, wealth management. So not only the financial side of the story, so to ensure life quality, but as well the purpose side of the story. And in what kind do you have an alignment with your personal values and mission in life with the organization that you are working for. So um, it's, it's bundled within, within the book, Wealthy Workplaces, together with 14 walking interviews that I did with very high-end influencers, political people, professors, uh, CEOs of very big organizations uh, in Belgium. So they are all in the book integrated to inspire uh, other leaders, executives, uh, in Belgium, because it's only in Dutch at this time, but maybe when we are successful in the States, it can grow and it, it can uh, broaden towards other uh, nations as well. So um, really proud to be here today. And um, you already did some introductions, Lynette. I'm going to talk a little bit on the strategical part of how do we implement health and well-being management within organizations, the different step stones. And on the other hand, I will give you a little extra tips on how do you should and could take care of yourself. Very quick when, um, tips on different healthy lifestyle pillars. If it's okay for you, I would like to share some slides, Lynette. Um, here they are. Okay, I'm, I'm always uh, starting with this slide. It's, it's a quote of uh, Victor Hugo. It's a French um, um, poet who was living in, in the year 1800, I think. And um, one of the quotes that he has mentioned in the past, is he was rather visionary, I think. Nothing is as powerful as an idea whose time has come. And I think we are, we, we, what, we, what we've been through the couple of years uh, during the, pan the health pandemic really shifted the mindset of, of a lot of uh, leadership within big and smaller organizations. Um, the health crisis really put people first and made care for the people within organization a really strategic priority. This is what we have seen as well. Vlerik, it's a, a very high-end business school in, in Belgium. They did, did a study in over 100 organizations, more than 400,000 uh, people filled in the survey. And they really found out that well-being became the number one priority within HR departments. So HR departments will become very significant in the coming years and well-being will be number one priority. So it's, it shifted big time. It came from top, uh, I think, number 10 uh, three years ago. So because of the health crisis, it shifted to uh, the number one priority. As well, Hans Martens, he is one of my uh, walking buddies and he's mentioned in the book as well. He's head of, of uh, VOCA, it's the Chambers of Commerce 
an industry here in, in Belgium. It's an organization of 18,000 organization. It has members over 18,000. Um, so, and what he told me is that the, the coming five years, there will be three society crowd bars. Eh? There will be, uh, uh, organizations should focus on sustainability, on technology and digitalization. And the third one, he told me, and that was very good for our business as well, will be the health and well-being operational coaching within organizations. So helping them to implement a successful strategy on how they could uh, take care of their people um, so they will would become the healthier version of their self would be very important to implement it on a structural way uh, within a couple of years and maybe for a long term in the future. So it, it gave me a lot of trust and support to move on with my organization as well. Um, what we have seen as well during the pandemic, the health uh, crisis, is that um, a lot of organization uh, shifted from seeing health and well-being as a cost rather than uh, seeing it as an investment rather than a cost. And it's not only the, the economical saving, the, the pure return on investment side on, 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 on the investment, so saving on healthcare or saving on insurance claims, but it's much bigger than that. Eh? We call it value on investment, each return on investment for breakfast. It, it's much bigger than only the economical side of the story. It's the added value you put on, like how people shine within your organization. How do they interact with each other? Um, what's your retention uh, is, is rising? Eh? How do you shine as, a, as, an, as an, an organization? Uh, how do you attract talent? Uh, you can't measure, measure it on an economical side of the story, but it, it, it creates so much more value than only the the purely return on investment side of the story, that already has a positive effect. Yeah? Uh, numbers show that if you invest one euro, and don't see it as a cost, please, if you see it as an investment, if you invest one euro at the end, you will have a minimum of 0 0.26 at the end of the year. So it's certainly a positive effect. If you do it properly and on a structural way in the health, physical, mental and social emotional story, a structural way, so not ad hoc loose ends, but very structural, maybe you can arrive at four um, euro per invested euro or one dollar, four dollar per invested dollar that you have invested in health and well-being. So it's, it's a very positive uh, story if you uh, have the guts to see it as an investment and if you invest in it in the long term. How do we do it strategically uh, within organizations? We have like a five step stones plan, uh, Lynette. And um, I will zoom in um, on a later stage of today's session on the Align and Connect phase, but I will give you an overview uh, to start with. So how do we implement uh, a, wealthy, uh, a wealthy lifestyle flow within organization? Let, let's say it like that. We always start with alignment and connection. Right? What does it mean? It's very important because before you can start any preventive uh, health and well-being uh, campaign within your organization, there needs to be a fertile ground. Uh, if your management, middle management isn't aligned, um, they don't share the same mission, vision, values within of your organization, and people aren't central within that policy. Right? Okay, taking care of your people is not central, it's, it, it doesn't have a lot of chance to, to survive on, on, the, on the long term. So you really need to be aligned as a management, as a working group, as a steering group to um, uh, spread the positivity virus within your organization. So you need to have an uh, alignment on management level, a good corporate well-being, uh, health and well-being team. And from that point on, you can uh, move further on the on the step stones. Uh, second step stone, what we really do is measuring and question. So that really means that we measure the individual needs as well as the organizational needs before we start on step stone three on designing and planning the project management. So it's really important the measuring phase that you measure the needs where your people, uh, they lay awake from in, in the night, eh, where they can't sleep from, uh, what takes energy, what gives them energy that you can build on those data, your, your planning for your project. 
on the fourth uh, phase, we, we, we talk about promotion and sustainability. It's really on if you have the data and you designed your plan, your project management, then it's really important that you promote a healthy behavior eh, on, the, on the long term and that you change the behavioral mindset of your people within your organization um, on a, on a long-term vision. And it, it takes time. It, it, it's not only with loose ends that, that the healthy behavior of the people that are really willing, uh, that they will change behavior. So you really need to focus on the long-term vision and you really need to do it uh, with different uh, teams that we will uh, mention a bit, bit further. The fifth one, the evaluation and optimization, is really uh, there to prove and to improve of your program. What went well? What can we do better uh, to arrive on, on bigger participation? Um, what, we, what can we do to optimize the, the interventions, interventions that weren't so successfully? So what can we change on that, on that project management? And it's like a never-ending story. Eh? You should always try to uh, reevaluate in between. Uh, if you see it on a, a couple of years, your project planning, uh, it, it's really important that you, you um, reevaluate your KPIs, your targets that you have put in the measure and question phase that you evaluate them on a regular base. So that's the, the five stepstone plan where we coach and consult organization uh, towards successful project management. Um, the first step stone, we talked about alignment um, on the management level. And it, in that step stone, we, we really check on the fertile ground of organization. And to give you a couple of examples, um, I took a very famous um, reference here as well in Europe. Uh, I, had, I have written uh, the book, Southwest Ireland's Way. Um, and it, it's really important that if you start with the health and well-being management uh, on a structural way, when you kick it off in your organization, it really needs to be embedded within your mission, vision, or values of your organization. And what we see here in the mission statement of Southwest Airlines, it, it really puts uh, people first, employees first, customers second. It all starts from the health uh, physical, mental, emotional, and the sense of well-being of their own co-workers. And from that point on, you can be, you can serve your customers as a, as an a, an airplane service. I've I've uh, found uh, Angela Ahrens. She's a senior vice president of Apple now, uh, and she as well has the vision of putting her employees first, and then uh, comes the customer. So it really starts from the top. If, there, if there's an alignment um, within your leadership, then you can have a very fertile ground to arrive uh, to the next phase within your organization. And then I, I found as well, Lynette, um, I found the, uh, the mission and the vision of, of AACP. And maybe you can, you can tell a little bit about that. Sure, thanks, Brad. Um, certainly our, our mission and vision are very aligned with health, but also it includes, it's all encompassing. So in, within the mission saying at the end to improve health for all, that's not just our, the public that our members serve or the um, future pharmacists that our members educated, but educate, but it's also our, our members um, our faculty, individual administrators, faculty members, professional staff, and it, it also includes us as AACP staff. Um, and so with that, our vision comes right in line with that in terms of envisioning a world of healthy people. And as you, mm -hmm. you and I mentioned before, health is such a broad term. It involves so many different facets of our life that um, it is important that we recognize that as associations uh, and move forward and not just always look to our members. Of course, our mem we're here for our members, but we also have to look at those that we work alongside with our staff members, staff colleagues every day. Yeah, very nice, thank you. Really, really interesting and inspiring as well, because I think this is a future eh, to, to help organization uh, putting in the mission, vision or values towards the outside world that their people really comes on a, on a, on a first uh, base. Eh? Um, well, there's a lot of scientific research being done. I'm, I'm going to stand up a little bit during the, the talk. Um, 
I have my own set stand desk at, at, at home. It's really useful to do that uh, while you are presenting or in a meeting. Um, and I'm, I'm, su I'm supported as well with, with this model. Uh, we are we are been using this uh, model from, uh, it's a Finnish professor, Johan uh, Ilmarinen. And he uh, he invented the, the house of workability. Yeah? It's like um, a house that has uh, the ground floor and three top floors. And uh, the ground layer it, um, is really the basic foundation of the, the workability house. It's really formed from uh, the physical, mental health status of your employees within your organization. So the full po potential, the full capacity of your employees can only uh, arrive at a certain uh, maximum potential if you really invest in the physical and mental uh, side of the mental health of your, your, your co-workers. So you can read a lot of it. It's, it's really interesting um, to read a bit more on that uh, because it's, it's really individual and as well organizational uh, built theory. Um, so it, uh, you can build on competences, motivation and on leadership skills only if you invest in health and well-being first within your organization. So. Uh, Professor Ilmarinen, very inspirational uh, to build on workability within your organization. Um, but what is health for us as Springbok? Eh? We have like, uh, we can see it, it health in a very broad perspective um, and we do that as well. If we implement it within organization, we always do it uh, in, an, in a connected um, vision of, of seven healthy lifestyle pillars uh, we talk about. So uh, we always have a, a structural health and well-being program that um, embodies those seven teams, like in moving more, uh, eating healthy, uh, stress management, like resilience, as you already uh, initiated, uh, Lynette, sleep quality, relaxation teams, um, how healthy is your environment? How is it stimulating you to be healthy or, or, or live a well-being uh, life? How are you connected with your coworkers or with your, your peers? Um, how do you communicate with them? How do you organize your feedback culture within your organization? Uh, and the last one is the, the power of the positive mindset. So very important, seven uh, life, healthy lifestyle pillars where we work on within our um, structural health and well-being programs. We always work on a preventive uh, side of the metal. So we always anticipate uh, before bigger pro problems would, would arise. So that's really important. We help them uh, to take good care of themselves on one of those of, of different topics where your people are interested in. So it's important to, to em em embody them within a structural uh, program. Um, Self-care as a leader. Really important. I would like to take you with with, with me on on the um, the Hudson River crash, where you see a visual. And so before the plane crashed, uh, a couple of minutes in 2009, after they they took off, um, the oxygen masks came down. Um, and that's the same thing for you as an executive. As executive, as you see here uh, on the picture, uh, you can't take care of somebody else before you. You have to take care of yourself first. So you first put on your own oxygen mask, you take care of yourself, and then you can take care of others. And that's the same thing as a leader. So now I'm going to give you a couple of examples, some tips, how you could take care of yourself within those uh, challenging pandemic times. This is a picture of uh, uh, your, your former uh, president, Mr. Obama, who's doing a a lunch meeting or a, a walking meeting with um, the German uh, Kanzler Merkel. And that is something that I, I would advise to every single one of you. Go outside, uh, certainly in winter period, take some daylight, uh, move around, because when you're outside doing some wa walking, it's inspired with, with the Japanese uh, vision on, on Shinrin Yoku. It means boss baiting. And it, it after 20 minutes, you have like an immediate effect on your stress and uh, your cortisol level in your blood if you're outside doing some walking uh, with, with an, a decrease of, of 10% immediately. So it, it's really powerful to, 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 to lower your stress level. As well, your, your blood pressure 
goes higher eh? and then you, you, your blood flow arrives in your, your brains. So it's very good. We are all um, uh, brain workers. So it's really important to, to, to create some, some oxygen within our brains. So when you walk, eh? you see the difference uh, towards somebody who is very sedentary and somebody who took a walk of 20 minutes. So it's, it's really important. Move more uh, during the working hours. Um, another example, a quick win, is the attention span. Uh, here you see, uh, you see a picture of a, a tomato. It's, the, it's called the, the Pomodoro effect. Um, and the Pomodoro is, 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 is like a technique where you could focus for 25 minutes. You can, you can do it in meetings or in, in focus time for yourself, but you focus for 25 minutes. Then you take a break of five minutes. You do it again, 25 minutes working, focus, five minutes of break. The third uh, block of 25 minutes, five minutes rest. And then you have the fourth block of 25 minutes and then you have a half an hour of rest. And it's really a technique that helps you focusing eh? because when you see the attention span uh, cycle of people, you see the green line, um, you can only focus for about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, after that, your energy drops and you, your attention span goes, goes deep, very deep. Eh? And there are some tools that could help you focus a little bit longer. Eh? Here you see like a tool I've been using a lot. It's, it's uh, Focus at Well. It's uh, like a music that's aligned with um, the brainwaves uh, technology. So it, it creates um, an alignment with your brainwaves uh, so you can concentrate focus for a little bit longer if you have some focus music with you. Another tip, don't use deadlines anymore. Use party lines because when you achieve a result as a team, as an organization, it's not a negative thing. It's not a deadline. It's really a positive thing. So the positive mindset of partying, celebrating successes is really something you should do. So yeah, my advice is step out from the crowd. Um, Try to be innovative, uh, try to invest really in the structural health and well-being uh, policy because it is the future. Uh, you will stand out from all the other organizations that don't do that. Uh, you will win the war for talent uh, for sure and you will give the care to your people that really uh, deserve it. If we do it all together, hey, Lynette, we can change the world. Hey? We make it a better place, but it is, it's in our hands to really make that difference. Thank you so much, Fred. I think that that was an enormous, um, great quality quality of work that in examples that you gave, and um, really appreciate that. I, I think that as we begin, as we end, I'm sorry, this part of the conversation, I want to emphasize something that you mentioned um, early on in your talk, and in, in, in that when we think about population health with all the areas of that pertaining to health, including our, including well-being and resilience, it, it's all about people. It, it's mm -hmm. about the people. And these issues, it, it's not only our staff colleagues and it's our members and it's the, the people in the communities that are members and that we serve. It's the people that we live with and that we, in those communities that we work within. And mm -hmm. I really believe that the pandemics, because I think there's been multiple pandemics that we've been a part of, or we have experienced to varying degrees. So everything from the COVID-19 pandemic to social injustice, to economic insecurities, to mm -hmm. political realignment. I think that these, all of these things really has enabled us to see and get to know our, our staff, colleagues, and our members mm -hmm in a much different, in many more ways than just the primary relationship that we have with them. Mm -hmm. And so I know that our association management community is going to continue to seek mm -hmm. and learn more about strategies, tactics, and tools that we can utilize as for our individual, as well as our staff and member well-being and resilience. Mm -hmm. And so now we're gonna go ahead and start our, our live question and answer discussion period. And yeah. we look forward to seeing you there.